two days not posting i humbly ask for your forgiveness ladies and gentlemen it's been rough with these technical glitches but it is what it is as y'all keep telling me in the comment section keep pushing so as many times as it takes to record this video i will welcome back to my channel millenator gods of earth i'm your host ramudisa the high king if you're new family make sure you head over to my page and you check out my videos and you enjoy what you see smash the thumbs up to subscribe let the algorithm know what's good let other like-minded souls know that we're out here with the share i appreciate all of the warriors who have joined my channel as of late thank you for the love and the support if you happen to catch my previous video european south africans stealing black american farmer jobs the boys are liars between that particular topic and the unique mental element of it the psychology of the modern day european who claims they are not their ancestors yet they do everything in their power to prove that they are still as they continue to behave so with africa blessed with mineral resources with african people blessed with biological capacity to outdo everyone and everything because we are the originals the primordial creators of mankind and with it makes us the source of all things but of course mankind hates us being the source of things because they've been taught anti-blackness on top of that do we enter into the topic of today's video yes yeah, in my previous video they talked about land right in other videos we talk about resource pardon me in other resource in other videos we talk about resources how we continue to be exploited to the benefit of outsiders yeah Mm-hmm. On that front, today's video is about culture. Culture is power. Of course, you know black culture is king. Everyone wants to take from it, everyone wants to exploit it for their own benefit, then they want to disrespect black people in the same process. Such as the next topic of what we were on about in our previous video where white South Africans would rather go everywhere but South Af but Europe and colonize people and neo-colonized people now we are seeing another side of neo-colonialism where black culture is taken used and abused and disrespected by non-black peoples and when we call them out they want to then enter into an attitude so let us get into the, today's video because again economy because again cal culture is power so whose culture is being celebrated lets you know who's in charge of the society or who's said to be in charge of the society as well as the economics that surround it all if you are unaware of the economics of black culture from black hairstyles the traditional everything african to black music and everything thereof if you don't know the value of the economics of it all that's fine this is what today's video is also partly about it's not about the individuals as you can see it is not about the individuals but specifically the economy surrounding black culture once upon a time becky was happy being becky as you can see Long, blue-eyed, perfect in a white man's world as far as white supremacist beauty standards are concerned. But in the prison world where birth rates are collapsing and society is said to be inherited by the African black man and black woman as we reclaim our throne, as we are also entering an age of newfound pride of ourselves, post-white supremacists convincing us that we are savages who are ugly, that our culture is um, a trash when we finally believe that our that we are ugly and our colleges are trash and alienated from our everything truth here come the descendants of the colonizers now incorporating what was once said to be trash now for their own benefit celebration veneration and profiteering but of course these things are not going unchallenged in this present day society where black women have suffered the mistreatment being told they are unprofessional for their hair and so on and so forth then white women turn around to be rewarded they turn around to be rewarded for these things before we continue let's make sure all right everything's proper on the technical side <laughs> let's get into the first clip now i prepared a bunch of other clips oh wait yeah i prepared a bunch of other clips but let's get into the first one yeah before i monologue too much low volume just in case 
Come with me, get braids. Now, of course, the sister's getting that guap. There's no shame in that. If the sister knows that average white girls cannot have African hairstyles, and they want them anyway, look at that look on her face. Says she knows what she wants, what she's doing. She knows that this is gonna destroy her hair. But this girl wants what she wants, and this is gonna get paid anyway. All you gotta do is look at the comment section. Oh my god. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it began with the Kim Kardashians, the original criminals in this game. They take from black culture, use and abuse, rename it, and then once black peoples have been completely removed and erased from their situation, they then take the credit and the benefit, and then white girls look to girls, to women like her, for example. Again, money, profit, gone. Credit, gone. Our, sis, our good sis knew what she was doing. That's the joke. This comment is what I was looking for. <laughs> the sister knew what she was onto. That if our girl wants this, she's gonna get it. But between this particular Becky, who went ham on this raid situation, being called out for it, here's an example. To everyone that's just so pressed because I have braids and I'm a white girl, I have one question for y'all. Do you believe that cultures? Hold up. To everyone that's just so pressed because I have braids and I'm a white girl, I have one question for y'all. Do you believe that cultures should be shared? And if the answer is no, why do you believe in segregation? Mm, you see what they do? To everyone that now again the logic of white supremacy and present-day neocolonialism. There's a logic and a psychosis behind it all. When we request a simple respect of our cultural identity and boundaries, they come with this gaslighty logic that what we're doing is equal to what they've done. And it isn't. It never will be. What other examples are there? Hmm. She kept getting called out as you can as you can see. And of course with the braids, she keeps doing these things that only people with braids can do. Rule number 52. If you have a problem with me, text me. And if you don't have my number, you don't uh... know me well enough to have a problem with me. Mm. Rule number 52. They get an attitude, they get a miss I got braids now, and it's a whole attitude. And I will go into the uh, the logic of it all, but I don't want to share more of this because I don't want to come back to this lady. She's irritating. Bitch, I said what they said. I'd be even messed with the bonnet if you don't know the economics of the bonnet y'all it's okay the point is she's out here capitalizing maximum on all things black while yes respecting black people and black women to hell with anyone who would dare call her out this is in a world where black people continue to create things and have them stolen and hijacked and these people continue to profit to the exclusion and devastation and disrespect of black people. What other example is there? Hold up. Ah, there's a fine one over here. Proof that they know full damn well what they do. Watch. Watch. I just wanted to come on here and sincerely apologize to everyone who was offended by me having braids. I didn't think anyone. I just wanted to come on here and sincerely apologize to everyone who was offended by me having braids. I didn't think anyone would really care, um, but I've decided to cut them out because I think it's really disrespectful. Shut the fuck up. That's what y'all mm. really wanted me to say, huh? That's how y'all want me to react to this shit. Look at him. Kiss my white fucking ass, bitch. Mm -mm. I just wanted. Mm -mm. But again, like I said, the logic and psychosis of it all. Before they get, they want what they want, they first get it into their heads. Let me see if I can play this one. The sound wasn't working the last time. The sound is still not working on this one. Alright. That's all good. Uh, let's touch on a side. Because I captured the video. I'm really getting sick and tired of y'all bullying white people online talking about slavery and that's y'all only argument did you know that slavery has been over 
for about 160 years, nobody who is alive today has had shit to do with slavery. And that's your only argument, talking about white women can't wear braids in their hair because you don't understand the cultural significance. So by that logic, black women shouldn't be able to wear no wigs, don't you straighten your hair, because if you don't know the cultural significance of a uh -oh. white woman, you better not be appropriating their fucking culture. See? How about just don't be a dumb fuck? Mm. Y'all, wear whatever the fuck you want in your hair. Nobody gives a fuck in real life. And one last thing that I want to make abundantly clear to y'all who are worried about what the fuck I'm doing, y'all can kiss my white fucking ass, bitch. Mm-hmm. Like I said, they get an attitude once they get braids in their hair, and they think that it's, it, it's enough. I'm really getting sick and tired of y'all bullying so like you said, like, like I showed you in the previous video, they know full damn well the psychosis, the logic of what they're doing, and then they do it anyway. They get it into their heads that you can do whatever you want, no one allowed today is blah, 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 blah. And but don't believe me. Believe the general average white person who wants black cultural things, regardless of how we feel about it. Why do I wear this hairstyle? Honestly, I think this is my most favorite question I've ever gotten asked then the reason is because the way that they make me feel is unmatched. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> the day after I put these in, I went to school. Uh, I was in high school and I had friends that came up to me and they were just like, where did this Ellie come from? And the instant Attitude. confidence that they gave me was just incredible. I swear it was like a spiritual experience. I have worn them nonstop for six years. Uh, what? I, I will take them out for a couple days at a time. Jesus. But the confidence that they have given me is unbeatable. There has never uh -huh. been any makeup. There's never been an outfit. There has never been like there has never been anything else that has given me the confidence that these have given me. There is something truly magical and beautiful about them. And I have seen it not only in myself, but thousands of our clients that preach the same thing that they have mm -hmm. never felt so true to themselves uh true to themselves while being dripped in dreadlock aesthetics proximity to black culture makes white people feel some type of way so all the things that they associate with us as black people strength confidence intelligence all those glorious things the things that they hate about us they will then demonize them in us and once we have been demonized they turn around and embrace those things so that they are the only ones who walk around with the confidence like i said in the previous video or the other man said three step process be taught how to survive number one be taught how to survive by the indigenous people or any indigenous person their culture once you learn their secrets number two you genocide erase destroy and demonize those people once society and humanity has forgotten who the originals are replace the people as the originals now everyone is looking to you for the culture for the knowledge for the spirit all those things and when they continue to be confronted with this mm, i thought we were over the whole telling people what they can and can't do based off of the color of their skin mm. Pretty sure that was like a long time ago but who's we who's we who are over what so when I say the economics of culture, understand, they are now buying, trading, and selling these things. I don't know how long they've been doing it for, but to the disrespect and exclusion of black culture. Now, where black women are the ones who are on the receiving end of this trauma, where in, the, in America they had to do the Crown Act, whether or not it's enforced is unknown. Here we are. But they will accept and do these things to the destruction of their own hair. Because, I mean, these things are not meant for white people. So let's face it, right? But again, the logic. They first convinced them of these fallacies and fantasies. That no one alive today is responsible for slavery. Blah, 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 blah. And then they turn around and boom. Do what they want to do anyway. But, like I said, between this Becky, there's also this Karen over here. As you can see by the basic look and image of the aesthetic, at first you wouldn't think it. You would think it's just a regular hippie white girl. Until you investigate deeper into the appearance. The dreadlock aesthetic. You know, the 
seeming full soul music i mean we all know soul music is original black but the point of the one that got into people's nerves was this particular situation over here And yeah, the comments were equally as ruthless. Coachella final boss, OMG, I love no name too. You see, people started to recognize that, hey, this white girl is using the song that traditionally belongs to a black girl. A black girl made it, her style, her aesthetic, everything, and she came and put her face on it. She got the, uh, how many likes? Million plus likes, probably a million plus views with all of white society supporting her for the music and she went in on the sound getting millions of views family thousands of likes oh my god no way did she let anyone know who inspired her and everyone was just not having it among those who were eating it right up because the point is they hijack black culture and then they get the celebration, the love, the financial resources, everything. And just like that, a black person's financial situation is exacerbated. Where viral sound was your paycheck out of poverty. Boom, comes a white girl and takes it all from you. White, 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 white. What spirit, guys? <laughs> oh, hip, epic, epic. But uh, so between the general aesthetic of what it means to be black, the sound, the culture, the everything. And, and again, like I said, it's not about the individuals. It's about the general um, psychosis of the average white person to commodify and capitalize what belongs to indigenous and melanated people to the detriment of the peoples to whom it belongs. Now she's out here disrespecting black women with the bonnet and everything. I don't even want to go into these other videos. I'm just done with that. But let's take a look at the clapbacks. They were out there. Let's begin with this one. It's simple. Mm, I thought we were over the whole telling people what they can and can't do based off of the color of their skin. Mm, I thought we were over the whole disrespecting other people's culture and history by culture appropriating. Hmm. Basic, simple, straightforward. Oh. Hey. Do that again, brother. I love my people. That's the TED Talk. That's it. Because once you hear our sound and you learn to recognize that there's no way a non African person has the vibe to tell a story. What vibe? What empath? What? So, again, when you learn to recognize the story of your people, the image of your people, the culture, everything. You won't miss it when someone is trying to commodify and get in on it. I'm well aware that I attract what I allow in. I am a vibration. People can It's happening. It's happening. It's already starting. Oh my gosh. There are thousands of comments by white it's happening it's happening it's already starting oh my gosh there are thousands of comments by white women on that post saying oh my gosh i love your vibe i love your music that's not her vibe she stole that from black people 
She did not mm -hmm. create that music out of thin air. That is literally no name circa 2016 telephone. That whole song is no name's whole album. And guess what? No name is black. She's black. And that white woman is white! And she took her whole aesthetic and it's already happening again. This happens with smaller black artists. She already has a million likes on that video. Mm, mm, mm. A million likes, thousands of comments. Come on, mm. be serious. And guess what's going to happen? Guess what's going to happen? All these white women, these new white women that love that song that that white woman just posted are gonna think, wow, this is an entirely new vibe that I've never heard of. <laughs> wow, this is a new new type of music I've never been exposed to. Wow, she created that. No, she did not. She specifically, specifically took that from black culture, a black artist, and and this is literally colonialism. This is mm -hmm. literally what No Name raps about. You niggas are scary. This is insane. This is literally insane. And I'm not trying to send hate to that person, but you need to give credit where credit is due. You didn't conjure that out of thin air. That art, art style, that rap style, has come from other people, other black people, black women, who do not get millions of likes on a singular TikTok video. Yes, people know about those artists like No Name, but like, look at what she already has gained. Look at the attention that she has because she raps like a black woman. Come on now. And I guess my whole takeaway from this is No Name, who that woman raps like, is dropping an album in two hours. It's called Sundial, and you need to go stream that. But a couple of days ago. you check out Sundial, you need to listen to the album Telephone and the album Room 25. No Name has a song that's super popular within a black community called Diddy Bop, and it sounds super familiar to the song that that woman posted, and I wonder why. And I know mm -hmm. it may not sound like that big of a deal, but this happens to black people in the black community all the time. When we do something and we create art, other people get their hands on it and they take it and make it their own and they take the credit. That is And what, the resources. That is what that culture does. And we need to be able to pinpoint that and be like, hey, that's not your art style. Give credit where credit is due. Mm. Mm -mm. I think I want to go into this. I see a, there's a white woman over there. Get about to give a take. Let's have a look. But before we touch on it, what the sister was saying in that previous video, the amount of money that is lost, people, because white people will rather take from black content creators and surround themselves with other white people who deep down don't want to celebrate black people who created it. They want to give the attention and love to the white thieves. But here we are in this messed up neo-colonial economy. To everyone that's just so pressed because I have braids and I'm a white girl, I have one question. If you look at the lines on the left, you'll always be too close to the left. If you look at the lines on the right, you'll be too close to the right. So don't look at the lines to guide yourself. Look far at the center of your lane. Hey, so, um, yeah. A white woman to white girl, I just wanted to give you a visual on how to stay in your lane. Oh. You stay in your lane. Oh, but wait, hang on. Let me, let me just, it's supposed to have the middle part. <laughs> we don't have much middle. What? Um, yeah, maybe we just. Is that a tease? Right there. Okay, I think that's better. Yeah, Um. so, <clears throat> okay. yeah, what you're doing is not culture appreciation. Culture appreciation would be giving a black woman a compliment on her hair, Um. <clears throat> not being racist and making, you know, um, comments about their afrocentric features mm -hmm. that you did in your videos you know that's pretty racist mm -hmm. um so yeah so culture appreciation would also be supporting black businesses um things like that to appreciate the black culture from your distance what you're doing is culture appropriation yeah the act of taking and using some things from a culture that is not your own especially without showing you understand respect to the culture mm. so yeah you culture appropriation and just because you have a uh, biracial child does not give you access to the black culture even mm -hmm, if you're married mm -hmm. to a black man does not give you access to the black culture even if you have black friends does not give you access to the black culture so as a white girl um you should probably just stay in your lane just stay in your lane so people aren't so pressed 
about you um, having box braids that don't belong to your culture. I mean, do, do you think that this does not apply to you? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, just stay in your lane. It's just uh -oh. that simple. And that is the point, people. But aside from that, let's get into some other sister's hot takes on it. To everyone that's just so pressed because I have braids and I'm a white girl, I have one question for y'all. Do you believe that cultures should be shared? And if the answer is no, why do you believe in segregation? Did you just hear what you said? Y'all be saying stuff sometimes, y'all be saying stuff sometimes, and I don't know if y'all hear yourself when you talk. Because So your explanation of sharing culture and not sharing culture is togetherness of segregation. And what you're clarifying for everybody is that in y'all's minds, the idea of being together means you must take somebody else's stuff. Because you stated it loud and clear that if you don't share culture, you must want segregation. Working backwards, implying that in order for us to be together, you must use and utilize my stuff, our stuff, our stuff. And that is you guys' understanding of sharing that you have shared mm -hmm. throughout history. You make that statement as a standard good versus bad, as if segregation is bad and unity is good. And that's, and that's what trips me up about that word unity. Because for y'all, the idea of unity is not respect. It is not togetherness. It is utilization and exploitation of somebody else's culture, mm. identity, and resource, land, and body labor. That is your understanding of togetherness. And I don't have to clarify it. You just did. And even in that sharing, it's not even mutual. And what the hell could what the hell could you share with black people that we would want from in your culture of whiteness? What could you share from your culture of white that we would want? What do you think black people want from you to mutually share anything in exchange that you, your people have not forced upon us through violence, psychological, physical, and emotional violence? Give me one thing you think you could offer black people that you could share that we would actually desire and want. Exactly. Not a damn thing. Damn thing. So this is not a mutual exchange. You understand when you take something, you don't pay for it, you don't give nothing back for it. You understand that's pilfering. That's mm. thievery. That's robbery. It's your description of unity for black people. That has always been you guys' description of unity, by the way. By the way, that's how you guys always enter our space. Banking on banking on the innate kindness of black people. The kindness that has always been responded from kindness that has always been responded to from your collective with violence. I have yet to see, yet to see throughout history, you guys utilizing this unity and sharing without stealing. And you're still doing it in 2023. The bare minimum that you can give is respect. And you don't even have that. You don't even have that. So basically you want to utilize black people in their culture without giving not a damn thing back. Not a damn thing back. And for that, I have nothing to say in critiquing you and the braids. Because there's nothing we as black people can do to you worse than that traction alopecia gonna do to make your head sabu. As far as I'm concerned, thank you for clarifying for everybody, 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 so that when black people say that they want to be separate, not segregate, separate from you, it's justified. It's justified because there has not been a time that being with you does not suck us dry. It's solidifying for some black people, not all, why they want to get the fuck away from y'all. They want to get the fuck away from y'all. So you're not doing much by all the multitude of videos proclaiming how you could do whatever the fuck you want. We already know that, dear. We know that thievery is excused in your community. Mm -hmm. It's just about time that the translation is clear. And the translation of togetherness for y'all is stealing from us. Understanding that black is the standard. Understanding that black is clearly the standard. That black is clearly the standard. That y'all want. That y'all mm -hmm. want. And in essence, all that's saying to me, your white supremacy is just a delusion of actual inferiority. And you didn't hear that from, you didn't hear that from me. You said, y'all say it, you said it. You, you clarified, you see. So my dear, enjoy the braids. Cause actually this video isn't for you, babe. It's for other black people. to hear loud and clear when they say unity, and wanna come to the cookout. This message is actually for black people. We move forward into the future to understand that all we need is a little translation of what they say to hear clear as day that they are their ancestors and have no plan to change Start none what whatsoever actually saying because once again as i work with she said back way it was give me your stuff it's give me your stuff or segregate or segregate those are the options they're giving us give me your stuff or segregate so how are we going to respond to that shit because mm -mm -mm. segregate, y'all still cross the border and steal our shit okay and may the ball spots be the ball spots from that traction alopecia that appear, <laughs> alopecia that appear, get a, get a nice dose of some UV ray. Heavy. Oh, Heavy. No, 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 no. <laughs> Aside from that, people, 
It's the biological inability to even wear African hairstyles. When we say the crown, we mean it. There was one more that went in on that. So the first thing I noticed is that me and Scarlett live in the same city. We're both here in Houston. And not only is Scarlett a wannabe black woman, but she's also a wannabe model. Mm -mm -mm. Unlike mm -hmm. you, Scarlett, I have a history of being a real multi-published model. And me and Lake Holloway just so happen to be good friends. And once what? I let my very good friend of many years know exactly what you've been doing online, he didn't appreciate it and was too fearful for your safety that I would pull up to your photo shoot here in Houston on Wednesday. So he decided to call you on three way, you know, for your safety. <laughs> hey, Scarlett. Hey, what's up? First off, I'm going to tell you something. This is another reason why I do want to kind of meet up with you because the more and more I'm looking back at it, the more I'm like finding TikToks and more people sending me videos, the more I do want to have a talk. Here we go. And I quote, I am working with a professional marketer. Some of the mm. things that I say aren't exactly what I feel. She's being told to do it for marketing purposes. Cha ching You have a marketer telling you to do that. Um, actually, yes, I do. I sent all my videos to him uh, beforehand, and he'll tell me that it needs to be more controversial and... Isn't it interesting when being confronted by a black woman who just so happens to be in your city? Isn't it interesting how you switch up real, real quick? You didn't keep that same energy with me on the phone, Scarlett. Why is that? And you would think that somebody having a black child would understand how a marketer telling her to say racist things like this would be harmful to your child. Her by her her mixed child. Her by her. I don't know what y'all are calling it. Black is black, man. It's disgusting and pathetic that somebody would be so desperate for fame and clout that they will sit there and say things that they claim they don't really feel in real life. Because what you're saying online is hurtful. Even if you don't care about the black people and black women you're offending, you have a black child, and that is what's so annoying about white women who don't know and who aren't educated when it comes to the cultural braiding hairstyles that you wear and the problematic things that you say. It can get you touched in person. It's... Mm -hmm. Scarlett, girl, sit down. <laughs> like I said, people, culture is economics. It's power. <clears throat> And that's what it's about. She's out there making this cash money because of her marketing agent or whatever. And it's an agreed truth. They know that this is for clout. This is for profit. This is for cash money. And if a girl wants to be famous, let her. But my trip is the beauty standards have changed. No one even looks to the white woman as an attractive thing anymore they all recognize once again the original black woman the source of all things and with white girls losing it they are forced to switch up and it's gonna mess up their scalp the cost of trying to compete with black people is gonna cost them more than they realize but that's fine let them have it let them have it and on that note people is another side topic not necessarily a side topic but it was because of a previous video. Echo was activated stand by military force against Junta, yada yada yada. And the point of that is, I wish I had seen this video before that one. It wraps in on the whole argument. 
that we as black people must gatekeep everything from our mineral resources to our minds, bodies, and cultural practices, everything. In the Western world. Hold up. Wow, wow, wow. I just had the news. Hmm, the word on the street coming from Europe and also here in America is saying that the Western world in America has frozen Echoes Bank, the word bank, and they are threatening them if they don't take measurement to the problem in Niger, that they would do more. So, America and the Western world, they want the African leaders to go to war with each other. So they will have the opportunity to come and rob the rest mm. of the resources that that continent has. Mm. You ask them to go fight their neighbors. They voted no. They're not going to fight their neighbors. Now, you guys are threatening them and warning them and actually blocked their word bank that they're dealing with. African leaders, I hope you guys are learning now. Now it's time for you guys to be trading among each other. Stop exporting goods to this motherfucking western world and the united states because as i said before the mineral they, they need is right there in africa that's why they want you guys to go fight and you don't want to fight and they are closing your account isn't that weird mm -hmm. scam ass motherfuckers <laughs> Crook ass motherfuckers. Seriously, crook ass motherfuckers. Stop exporting shit to them. Stop the cocoa. Stop the gold. Stop the oil. Stop everything that goes in Europe. Stop it. Let them starve. Mm -hmm. Let them suffer. They want you guys to go attack your own fucking neighbors so they can come and have the resources and you guys say no and now they are pressuring you guys and close your fucking bank account the audacity there is nothing to be discussing with them what the fuck the audacity the audacity the unmitigated goal is the average psychological state of the modern day european people so between everything that we see them trying to get at us africa and black culture and everything it's all the same to me it takes a, a similar neurological function for them to compute information the same way they want what they want and they will take it they will first convince of themselves of whatever fantasy and fiction about black people, black countries, black culture. And once they get those ideas into their heads, they will come. They will come and take. But this one perfectly wraps it all up. Hmm? Well, I think I, have, I also have something to say about, uh, you know... Cinderella and her braids want to be black woman. When it dawned on her that she ain't the standard no more. Mm. Let's start when that again. It dawned on her that she ain't the standard no more. Mm. Mm -hmm. The misery of being a modern day white woman. The look on that face says she knows full damn well what she's doing. And the sister is getting that bag. Huh? Our sister is getting that money. Regardless. Get that oh, guap. But you girl. You with your spray on tan. 
Hmm? You will never cut it. <laughs> oh, is that is that is that Botox girl? I know that's Botox. Huh? Lip filler. <laughs> Box braiders, waist bead wearing, bonnet wanting. Well, damn. Mm. Hey, get out of here, Cinderella. Beat it. <laughs> when it's like waking up from a nightmare when you learn to see it. When you learn to recognize our image and likeness, our sound, our story, regardless of the situation. When you know that a certain person cannot have the history to have told a story in their song and yet there it is. And they don't have a natural vibe to sell. And yet, people are buying into them. Look at them, celebrating her. Their natural vibe? No. The song, the vibe, everything. They are dressed head to toe with the ethnicity and background of someone else's cultural truth, spiritual heritage. Because they, they got none to be proud of. Profit. They receive the attention, the love, mm. and they don't even tell those that give them the attention and love that actually those people over there are the ones who inspired me if you want to venerate someone there they are go show them some love go show them some financial support yet they're claiming they are not their ancestors it's they claim they are not their ancestors brothers and sisters yet they don't hesitate to hijack culture from African peoples and black peoples and then be celebrated for that culture to the exclusion and detriment of our own. But again, this sister touches upon it perfectly. Black folks, stop talking about cultural appropriation with white folks. Start calling it what it is, Negrophilia. This is a term that comes out of France in the avant-garde period in the 1920s. After World War I, a lot of people were looking for things that were simple, idyllic, to juxtapose from the horrors of the world. And particularly in Paris, what this meant was collecting African art, learning African dances, learning black dances, listening to black music. So much so that participating in black culture meant that you were modern and fashionable. And while mm. these folks were proclaiming their love of black culture and their love for black people, it wasn't reflected in their treatment of black people. We existed in the space of either being lionized or demonized. Doesn't that sound painfully familiar? Literally all they're doing is utilizing our culture to understand different in a way that centers whiteness. They enjoy what they perceive to be in comparison to what they're going through is simplicity. And that's deeper than cultural appropriation. Mm, it's deeper than cultural appropriation. There's something else. Black folks spiritual and psychological as the other redhead wannabe said but negrophilia that word explains perfectly the neurological happenings that i stated earlier when they see something that we want something that is known to be black and black proud and we're making it lit something happens in their brain and they just have to colonize it yes exactly Philosemitism and negrophilia are perfect parallels with each other. Philosemitism is actually what prompted me to look up a term that could be used in place of cultural appropriation. I think describing the idea of the negative impacts of fetishization of a culture without caring about the people is challenging to talk about through the lens of cultural appropriation. Because mm. cultural appropriation academically speaking is not always negative colloquially when we talk about that term it's almost exclusively in a negative context original definition of cultural huh. appropriation implied that there was some way in which two communities were connecting with each other subsequent definitions of cultural appropriation highlight how this can be exploitative in nature the difference between cultural appropriation and negro field is that you actually have to interact with black people in the context of cultural appropriation the problem with negrophilia is that you don't actually have to interact with black people damn well damn the difference between cultural appropriation and negrophilia is that with cultural appropriation you actually have to interact with black people and on some level 
It might even be appreciation on the extreme extreme. But negrophilia, far deeper than the psychology that drives appropriation. Like the other redhead wannabe said, it makes her feel some type of special way. Let's touch on that clip real quick. We move on. Why do I wear this hairstyle? Honestly, I think this is my most favorite question I've ever gotten asked. Then the reason is because the way that they make me feel is unmatched. Mm. Um, <laughs> the day after I put these in, I went to school. Uh, I was in high school and I had friends that came up to me and they were just like, where did this Ellie come from? And it's not Ellie. Ellie hijacked what she assumed as characteristic expression of confidence and whatever from black people and she put it up in there and everyone was like whoa that's not typical white people shit that's what that behavior was makes them feel some type of way you not you, you look at that look in her eye brothers and sisters understand that that's a general neurological function that takes place when they see the forests of africa when they see the wildlife when they see the mineral resources, when they see the black culture being expressive, when they see black people being strong and confident, intelligent in everything that we do, oh, they want it. Some part of their brain recognizes their own inferiority as cave dwellers. Neanderthals remind, are reminded that they are Neanderthals in comparison to the African god, king, man, and woman. They know. Cave dwellers know what they is. But before we get on that, yeah, I think uh, that's it for, 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 for today's clips, people. Culture is power. The economics of black culture and black history. If you don't understand these things, these are the reasons why we will remain poor, people. We must gatekeep for our own benefit because if we allow Europeans to continue what they do, we will forever be on the receiving end. And then they will corrupt our music to make it dark and twist and they will worship and all that thing. But like I say, family, if you enjoy the channel and the video, make sure you head over to my page. Smash the thumbs up and the subscribe if you haven't already. If you happen to have TikTok, make sure you head over there. Check out my page. Hit the follow if you like what you see. But ultimately, ultimately. Y'all ever just wake up and say, thank you, creator. I'm not white. Count my blessings every day. Every day. Count your blessings every day, royal family. Let me know what you think in the video in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one. Stay royal. Stay dangerous. Peace.